Hey, this is Natsu, and we are in the tier 10 Japanese destroyer, Shimakaze. She has 6 127mm guns, 15 torpedoes, 28 AA guns, a surface detect of 5.9 kilometers, top speed 39 knots, total 21,900. For my modules, reduce crit chance on torpedo tubes, faster torpedo aim, faster torpedo rearm, lower chance of flood and fire, faster rudder shift, concealment. For my commander, Situation Awareness, Faster Torpedo Rearm, Faster Torpedoes, Ship Survivability, and Concealment again. We are on the map Trap, and I spawn near B, so that's where I'm headed. That is where you should go if you're a destroyer. You need to support your team. Domination requires that the destroyer tries to at least capture a base. I'm sorry. If you fundamentally disagree with me, I'm not going to change my mind. I think... The destroyer is the best equipped to take bases without risking their ship. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have one of the best detectability in the game. And you notice the way I try and capture B. I like to transition from one point to the other. And I'm going to keep as much distance as I can from the enemy team. There's no reason to engage them. I'm going to run this island and head for C. Now, you might read in the chat that we sort of agreed upon B and C as the primary objective for the map. And I totally agree. I think those are the two easiest points to capture. It seems that most teams generally go for A and it becomes a bloodbath. Who has the better angling? Who gets the better Citadel, right? There's a lot of RNG involved in that and it's not fun. It's not fun at all. So instead, we captured B. It looked like three of the destroyers chose to assist me, and that's fine. I'm going to transition directly to C. Nobody so far is apparently headed for C. I tell my team, hey, I think they went for A. And if they did, oh, if they did, there will be very little enemies. And we see our first victim of the day, the Admiral Hipper. Now, funny enough... My anchors away for this week is involving Trap and The Atlantic, two maps that will be changing in 0.5.5. In the next couple of days, I'm going to try and have a patch preview that has those specific maps. And I'm going to try and get the brand new maps as well. So this is a good little refresher course for those who don't get Trap or The Atlantic all the time. Now, the Hipper, he appears to want to head for C. But I don't think the indicator is truly telling the story. So I only send one set. Now you might say, wow, Notzer, you're pretty bold. It is pretty bold. But I feel confident that I have predicted his playstyle, his personality. And it looks like it worked out in our favor. We got just where we needed to send it. We only need two torpedoes and we take them out. Actually, only one. One was enough. We get first blood. It couldn't have worked out better in our favor. And a lot of torpedoing is psychology. Getting into the mind of your opponent. Reading their intent versus what you see. It's actually very fun for me. Because it's another playstyle that doesn't really get exploited in this game. I realize that there's a lot of joy in brute forcing. And I will be the first that agrees that... U.S. Destroyers are great at it, but there's a lot of fun gameplay around the torpedo and trying to launch it in such a manner that you predict the target's intention. I noticed that the Amagi, and he doesn't have an upgraded hull, the Amagi might be headed towards a direction that I could take advantage of, and I sent it against his ship, initially of course. Now this Benson, he's going to get so close to the torpedoes, he will scout them for his team. I don't know how many of them that he scouted, but we know he was close enough to get a little sight of them. And you notice, the enemy team definitely went for A. We read it correctly. And that's just playing the map and being familiar. Most of my team are in between B and C, and that's perfect. That's exactly where they need to be. We don't need to risk our ship. The enemy has to risk their ship. So my torpedo system's not going to be as successful as I would have liked. However, we get a bonus. We got a little bit of damage on the North Carolina. Didn't cause a flood. However, he had damage control. He was going to put it out. 
it would have been nice to force that cooldown out, but you can't win them all. Now this Izabo, he appears to want to head for B. As far as he is concerned, all of the enemy team are over by C. We're destroyers that are around A as a team. He has no idea we're there. So he feels like they're losing control of the match and he has to overextend his ship. And clearly he's taking a lot of damage. And it's set up perfectly for my ship to finish him off. And I just do a quick check. You always want to be aware of your teammates. These torpedoes look like they're going to be on target. I think we're good with two. I don't think we need any more, and we're definitely getting two, and we take out the enemy Izumo. And again, only one set. It's very hard to get comfortable enough with your torpedo systems to only use one set. I will stress that that comes with time. There's nothing else that will teach you quickly how to feel comfortable with the enemy movement. That just the intention of a player, you get used to it after you see it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. You can basically play their ship for them. Now there's Amagi. Again, I want to kill this Amagi. Initially, I felt like he was a little bit too angled towards our base. And by the way, there must be an enemy destroyer trying to capture it. It's being contested. So I felt like the Amagi was maybe angled a little bit too close and oh I gotta be careful with these torpedoes I don't want to run into him since he was angled a little bit closer than he probably would have liked I knew he wanted to angle away the friendlies are able to land a huge citadel and I think he's gonna run right into our torpedoes it yeah he is we only need two he's so low we get one and we get another see you later Amagi and so far, we've basically been three for four on our torpedoes, which is an extremely successful rate. You can't expect that in a Shimakaze with the minute and 30 cooldown. But anytime it happens, you need to give yourself a pat on the back because you have done a good job. Now, we sent it against the Ibuki. I felt like he wanted to go north of B, maybe bypass some of the friendlies that are engaging him. That way, the torpedoes obviously would run right into him. Now, there is a tiny little island. I don't even know if I would call it an island, but it's a object that's going to obstruct one torpedo, and I wasn't paying 100% attention. And look at how this Ibuki avoids my torpedoes. He just slows down, and the one torpedo that made contact with the island would have been enough to kill him or do significant damage. Friendlies land a huge citadel and take him out. Good job, Zambi. Zampi, whatever. Shimakaze, okay. We knew there was something out there. We're gonna engage it. Don't be afraid to use your guns in a Japanese destroyer. They're not that bad. I see way too many Japanese destroyers and way too many of those refusing to fire their guns. So we engage, of course. We still have our smoke. And in this instance, you might use your smoke. I, however, felt pretty confident that this is the only guy that's close to me. And as long as he's using his smoke, I'm not detected. See how I basically doubled up on my smoke charges whenever you're engaging a destroyer? They will protect themselves for you, and they will deny line of sight to their team. And we land a nice blind shot into the smoke. I don't know how much it did. Oh, okay, we get an idea. He's still pretty healthy. He's used his damage control, he's repaired whatever malfunction was going on with the module. This enemy, Yamato, appears to be coming to a complete stop, maybe going to reverse. Now, destroyers, this is your moment. You were designed to counter this specific tactic. And honestly, you're not doing a good enough job. There's too many that want to play bow on. We've got to do a better job of punishing this because this is honestly an embarrassing tactic that is so successful that it is a little bit of an annoyance that causes passive play. The ship is not going to move. He doesn't want to move. He wants to maintain the angling that he's using right now. And the enemy Shimakaze sent a torpedo. That's okay. Our first set, not successful. He's able to back up. So I led him in reverse. And maybe the destroyer caught sight of that. I will never know. I choose to use my smoke. 
he chooses to send his torpedoes because he saw me. He had an idea I was headed out west. Of course, we take damage from something. It completely blows up our turret. I can't wait for that change. In 0.5.5. Yes, 5.5. It's going to be so grand. And our torpedoes miss in reverse. Arr. I try to get a little bit of dot damage on him. You never know. Maybe it'll be enough. Oh, wow. For, oh, wow. I think there were two separate citadels that got them very low and the fire paid for itself oh oh reverse reverse and this benson shows up we try and engage with our guns great straddle the target come on get him all right good job team this has been a dominating affair and honestly it's because of the great strategy our team used we captured b we captured c most of the cruisers and battleships sat in between B and C, forced the enemy to come to us, while the destroyers sent out torpedoes to eliminate any predictable path by the enemy. It was near perfection, and we earned first blood, four kills, six torpedoes, just six torpedo strikes. We only did 1,850 base XP with such a short match. The Iowa actually outscored us. We did around 80,000 points of damage. <laughs> I'm happy. I felt like strategically, it was near perfection for the team. That's why I shared it. Now, let's share something that isn't near perfection for the team. We're in the Tier 9 US Destroyer Fletcher. It has five 127 millimeter guns, 10 torpedoes, 22 AA guns, a surface detect of 7.2 kilometers, top speed, 38.3 knots, total of 17,100 for my modules. Reduce crit chance on main battery, increase main battery accuracy, rate of fire, reduce the chance of flood and fire, faster rudder shift. For my commander, situation awareness, last stand, and superintendent. We are on the map, the Atlantic. And yes, this is not a example in strategic prowess. This is anything but. It is just a scrap. You get dirty, and we'll see if we come out ahead or behind. Either way, it's a good learning experience. So obviously, this is the Atlantic. It's changing in the next patch. You can just see how much open ocean exists on this map prior to 0.5.5. I'm very excited. I think the changes to the Atlantic are much better than the current incarnation. My favorite location is basically the northeast side of the map. Why? There's a lot of islands. It's interesting. Not a lot of people go there. So we're going there. Now we've got a battleship as backup and that's it. That's not good. Our concealment factor is terrible. Both my commander and the module itself are not loaded down. So we're spotted. Predictably, we don't see who spots us. Ooh, okay, it's an enemy Fletcher. We catch a quick glimpse as he goes behind an island. I set up my guns, which have great turret traverse. And I'm ready to go. Now, notice that he is rocking what appears to be the premium camouflage. So that tells me a couple things. He really likes the ship. He's probably very good at it. I should not underestimate anything about his play. And what's the first thing you do? This evil cruiser does a lot of damage to us. Causes us to lose our propulsion. I have to use my, well, I choose to use my damage control. And you might ask, not sir, why are you going aggressively at this destroyer? Because I am way too cocky. I feel like I can take him in a 1v1, even though we lost so much life. And of course, we catch a little bit of glimpse as he's leaving the smoke. He's trying to engage the battleship, which is, of course, seen across the map. He can't see me because I'm behind the island. And oh no, that's not what I wanted to see. I do have defensive fire, so I will be using that, and we engage him, and he immediately reacts. He saw the turrets completely change to my ship. I would prefer to not run aground. Please not, sir. God, we've already taken way too much damage. This is just, you know, you take the good with the bad, right? I'm a little bit too aggressive, but the aggression will allow me to exploit any weaknesses of my enemies and they will also be allowed to exploit any weaknesses in my play. I choose to use my smoke. I did not want to die to these cruisers that can engage me from the western side of the map. Ooh, an enemy destroyer, a uh, Fubuki. 
Interesting. And he's not moving. Maybe he intends to send torpedoes. The detection is around 7.2 kilometers. So as long as I'm behind that island, he cannot see me. And the aircraft seem to be doing whatever they want. We lost our battleship. Seems he either took a huge citadel or torpedo strikes. I don't know. We're all alone against six enemy ships. Yeah, this is really bad, not so yeah, You're right. Let's get out of here. Now, I do have torpedoes, of course. I am a destroyer. Spoiler. I'm going to send my destroyer torpedoes against the Mikhail. He intended to sail south. Maybe he's trying to get in position to kill me. I should also read into that. However, I was just too locked in in hoping that these torpedoes completely destroy him. Now, looking back on these torpedoes, they probably were not a well-thought-out endeavor because there was a destroyer right there. He probably scouted it out, told the cruisers what was up, and they were able to change their course. And I just, I feel like my life is going to end very, very soon. The enemy fighters appear to be looking for me. You could read into it out however you want. How can you tell their intention? I can see the whites of those eyes. They're looking down here trying to get me in. Yep, the enemy fighter locks on. We're detected. My AA is clearly off, as you can see. I figure, okay, okay, I get it. I get it, aircraft carrier. Yep, here they come. Enemy rune. We've got a Mikhail. We've also got the aircraft that are just so annoying hovering over my ship. We're trying to kill it. We're trying. Oh, look. There's the Fletcher. The triple threat. We've just got to give ground as quickly as we can. Thankfully, we have last stand. So I can't afford to have my damage control on cooling. Okay, there goes one turret. Okay, how are we going to lose? How long are we going to survive? This is not good. We have 30 seconds left on smoke. I'm just mirror driving at this point. Please, please don't hit me. And we're trying to get a little bit of distance. We're very close to getting outside of the detection of the Fletcher. However, we've got the aircraft overhead. It doesn't matter, not sir. I know, but I'm trying. And I'm sure many of you, if you play a destroyer at all, have had this exact situation occur to you. Oh, look, another turret. That's just great. You get overwhelmed by the enemy who clearly smell blood. They're like three sharks just moving in for the kill. Finally, finally, smoke comes back up. Of course, we use it. I tried to time it where I was protected by smoke and damage control completely blocked any of the module damage or fires, but clearly they were able to land one little fire. We've got 15 seconds left before we can use damage control again, and the fire's only ticking for 100 or so. Oh, come on. So I don't want to die. Okay. 900. 800. 700. We use it. 605 hit points. 604? I don't, didn't it look like a 5? Oh, of course. Get out of here. Go. Nobody wants to see you. Okay, Baron. <laughs> so, of course, we're trying to get away. And it is 100% Jurassic Park. This Tyrannosaurus Rex, which... Admittedly, it's more like a Velociraptor. We have to avoid every single shot, and we are just so hyper aware, and it appears that they're not gonna hit us. Anything? Oh, I think we're good. We finally, finally got out of detection range. We're gonna get sideswiped by the friendly, but it's only one hit point every second we're in contact, so. He drops it down to five, nine, six. We are one shell away from dying. And this isn't looking good. But of course, the game's not over. We've only wasted nine minutes by taking damage. We haven't done anything. This is the start of something beautiful. That's what you gotta tell yourself, even if you don't believe it, okay? You must believe it. My team are on the full retreat We've basically been battered and bruised, both on the west and the east, and it's going to take a miracle. Even though the team is still in it, we're only 15 down. It feels absolutely terrible. The enemy is aggressive on both sides of the map. 
we have to take advantage of that, of course. We have some secret agents in the back line. I don't know what their intention is going to be. I have no idea how successful they're going to be. I don't know how he got back there, but he's back there. So good luck, Destroyer. As for me, I'm a Japanese Destroyer now. There are no scenarios where I want to fire my guns. Maybe, maybe if it's very close to killing a target and we have smoke up, we could choose to fire, but we're pretty much all in on our torpedo systems at this point. And we lose another friendly. Uh, and it's a battleship. We really can't afford this. Now I try and get the intention of the enemy team. Are they willing to push forward? Are they going to come to a complete stop? Fight, bow on. You need to have some sort of read on them. And I was not going to send my torpedoes. However, it did look like I was going to send my torpedoes there. I don't think I've accidentally hit a friendly with a torpedo in months. And that's because, quite frankly, I don't send if there's ever a risk that I'll hit them. And that is on you, not on the teammate, to pay attention to torpedoes because, let's face it, Nobody expects that their teammate is going to try and kill them, or accidentally kill them. So it does look like the enemy is bunched up. This is an advantage for torpedoes because you're going to hit something, right? And I'm just trying to get a gauge. What? Mm. Yamato, Amagi. We got two Soviet cruisers. They're very, very squishy. They want to stay behind the battleships. So they kind of work against you in that manner. They're a little bit selfish. They're sort of as selfish as battleships are right now. Am I right, destroyers? Other cruisers? Yeah. We're talking to you, battleships. We're talking to the battleship that stays at 20 kilometer range the entire match and refuses to take any damage until the end of the match. Uh, you know, there's been one or two, right? One or two. So, eventually, the Yamato appears to be wanting to reposition his ship we send against him. He can't afford to take side shots. He's already pretty low. We have two ship deficit, but we can make it up. Believe, believe. The destroyer that was behind enemy lines is no longer behind enemy lines. He is very much in front of the enemy, fully detected. This is very bad. The Moskva is going toe to toe with the destroyer. And quite honestly, the Muskva should win that 100% of the time. His gun systems are so much better than anything at killing destroyers. He's like a light cruiser. But will he? That's the real question. I've got my smoke up. we got to start getting a little bit of damage. I'm hoping for a fire. Please give me a fire and please put it out. Yup. As predicted, the destroyer that was completely behind enemy lines is dead. That Yamato is taking a lot of damage, and oh, enemy destroyer. We've got to take him, of course. I don't care who you are. If a destroyer is this close to you, you need to fire on him. It's a Fletcher, too. They're pretty powerful. I hear really handsome gentlemen choose to use Fletchers. Yeah. Yeah. Only the most handsome. And he pops his smoke. So, it doesn't look like we're getting anywhere with him. Got to be careful. I don't want to have the detection while the smoke dissipates. That would be terrible. They just need one shell. One shell will end my day, but guess who gets their day ended early? The Yamato. He burns down. Good job. Moonshadow. I don't know what the first word is. Now, this enemy Moskva appears to be a little cocky. He feels like the game is over. Fully aggressive. All flanks push. Well... Never give up. Never surrender. Now, I've had games where the enemy has questioned my intentions. Of course, I'm going to try every single moment, and we lose another. Okay, this isn't good. We're down by three ships. But the Muskva hasn't changed his course that much. We're going to do a quick check. Okay, it looks like we will be able to land a torpedo, at least. And I'm sure he's going a little crazy. Oh, no! The torpedoes! Looks like we're actually going to get three. One, two, and a third. There you go. Muskva defeated. It's the beginning of the comeback, baby. That's what you got to treat it like. 
even if you don't believe it. I believe it. All right, so we got a Fletcher, and it looks like he's headed for the capture point. I am very far away. I don't have smoke, though, so I can't afford to fire on his position, unless, of course, I want to risk dying. So the best thing I can do is tell my team to kill him. I think that's a worthy cause. Kill him! Do a good job. But, uh, honestly, you just want to make sure that you don't die. You can't help the team when you're dead. I know, I know, that's shocking. They're doing a good job, though, against the Fletcher. And, unfortunately, he decides, maybe I shouldn't fire my guns. Maybe I should just drop off detection. Which, admittedly, is the right play for him, but it's the wrong play for us. We need to get kills. We're about... 150 points below the enemy, so that's three kills. We need to get three kills to have a chance to win this game, and if you can see the northeast side of the map, our aircraft carrier is right next to an enemy destroyer and an enemy cruiser. He's going to die, yes. The Essex will be dead. I know, it sucks. We're gonna have to overcome that as well, but the Amagi is very low. Not that Amagi, the Amagi behind the Amagi. Oh, we have our AA off, which is good. And we get a little too close to both the Amagi and the aircraft. I send my torpedoes, leading him with the expectation that he might go straight. The enemy Fletcher also sees us, but now we have our smoke. So I'm going to fire from the smoke at the Fletcher. Miss completely. Don't let this guy get away. Okay, okay, 1,000, come on guys. Get him! Get him! I'm just trying to spread out the fire. Maybe land one, maybe two, and I'm just not leading enough. Come on! We can get him. Don't let him get away, please. He's never going to show himself the rest of the match. My torpedoes, they look pretty good. The Amagi is holding steady. We might be able to get some damage there. But back to the Fletcher, because he only has 752 hit points. Just spread it around. Oh, one, two, three, four, four torpedoes. The Yamagi let four torpedoes hit his ship. You couldn't have played it worse. He was just perfectly spread. Oh, nice. That was a good shot by the friendly. And we can continue this onslaught. Unfortunately, the smoke will not last, so I choose to hold my fire. And every ship we get a kill on, we lose a ship. So it's still... We have three minutes left in this match. Oh, I'm detected. Ah, okay. That was just barely catching the last couple of seconds of detection. Now, an enemy battleship, for whatever reason, he's rushing towards our capture point. We have two tiers up on him. Our friendly Yamato is trying to engage this Amagi with bow on, and he does pretty good damage. He doesn't kill him, though. He still could ram and kill our friendly. We don't want that, so I'm willing to throw my life away in order to make sure that Yamato survives. Now we've got our torpedoes, we're going to send him against this cruiser. He has to use the edge of the map, which is a disadvantage to him. I have a general idea what he wants to do. Thankfully, we didn't have to protect the battleship. He was able to kill off the enemy, Amagi. And we're only down by 80 points, I think-ish. Yeah, around 80. We need two kills. We need to kill Two more ships. Come on, we can do this. And I held on to my second set of torpedoes because I felt like he changed his direction. So I think the first set will, of course, miss completely. But the second set, maybe he's expecting that I've already used it or it's not in the same area. He looks to be making a mistake. He's sailing right into it. Are you kidding me? After the start that we had, we now will have three kills with torpedoes. I thought I was dead like 10 minutes ago. There's one minute and 30 seconds left in the match. We are ahead by three points. Three. Not four, not two, three. We can't die. We have one minute and 15 seconds left in this match. And the Montana is going to take torpedo strikes. Come on, Montana! You can do this. Okay, he's able to take out a significant portion of the first torpedo strike. My AA was turned on. I was drawing. I was grasping, okay? I wasn't actually in range except for one little second. We turned it off. We don't want to be detected. We will die if anyone so much as blow 
on our ship. We can't take anything for granted. And I'm just, live, live, focus on living. All I want to do is live. I don't want to do anything else. Come on. 35 seconds in this match, and it looks like the Fletcher is desperate. He's trying to get damage. Enemy dive bombers are also incoming on the Montana. And interestingly, if he were to divert to my ship, he could potentially kill me, but he doesn't. He goes all in on the Montana, and it doesn't work out. 15 seconds left. The Montana is going to burn, but I don't think he'll die to a burn. Now, 10 seconds left. If they were to focus fire on one, the Des Moines or the Montana, they probably could have killed him. Oh, come on, Des Moines. Live! Don't die, my friend. Angle, believe in living, and oh my. We did it! We won! Good job, team. Wow, that was a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. That was a comeback. We earned two devastating strike, three kills, eight torpedo strikes, 400,000 credits earned, 1,657 base XP, and yes, I didn't do a lot, but this game was so close. I hope you enjoyed it for that alone. And we hit pretty clutch torpedo strikes. We did around 90,000 points of damage, and let's be honest, we would have lost that game if I was dead. Destroyers work on surviving, even if the first assault fails. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.